Hi there, welcome to Kitty Witty Papercraft. If you're new here, I'm Amy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the simplest of junk journals, a ring-bound junk journal. This is the perfect type of junk journal to make if you have never made a junk journal before. I always recommend actually making this style of journal if you've never made a junk journal before before you attempt making one where you like a little golden book junk journal where you build the spine and have to make signatures and sew the signatures in there's a lot of techniques or technical skills i should say involved in that kind of journal and i think sometimes just the whole like process or the idea of making a junk journal like that can be kind of intimidating or overwhelming and I think it keeps a lot of people from starting to try to make one and that's why I always recommend making a ring bound junk journal for your first one because it's not technique heavy so it's very simple to make and it really allows you to get comfortable with working with all the different kinds of papers that you often see in junk journals. So, you know, that's kind of a hallmark of junk journals, right, is having a variety of pages. And just that part of it alone can be, can be overwhelming because there's so many options. So if you kind of take away the technical aspects of a junk journal, uh, of junk journal making and just focus on that part for your first junk journal, I think that can be really helpful. So that is what we are going to do today. And this also is a great kind of journal for kids to make. So if you're watching this and this is during the um, coronavirus um, kind of stay at home time, you're probably home with your kids and looking for things to do. And I'm hoping that this is something that you could do with your kids because really all it involves is hole punching papers, which can be fun in, in and of itself, and just adding them to your binder rings. I mean, it really can be as simple as that. Um, I'm gonna take it a little bit further as far as putting the pages together. So this is kind of like a mini class. So you can make this as simple as you want, like for kids, or um, I'm hoping that this will be sort of a, like I said, a mini class in kind of making a very first junk journal for those who are brand new to it and getting really comfortable with the inside pages. And I have um, a little like formula I like to call it that I'm going to share with you guys that is going to make that process, I hope, really simple. And I'm going to share that with you guys in just a little bit. So this is going to be sort of a long um, video. I'm, I'm really going to break everything down and explain everything. It's not just going to be, you know, watch me put this ring bound junk journal together because I could do that and that would be really simple. But I really hope this is going to be something that you can learn a lot from. So I've got my little notes here over on the side. I don't like to have scripts when I do my videos, but there's so much I want to cover in this video that I have a little script over here. So I'm kind of checking my notes, making sure I don't forget anything. Um, so, you know, we're going to make this ring bound with a very simple cover. And I want to talk about everything before we get into the actual making of this. And I decided to not use a like little golden book, for example, for the cover and just use cardstock, scrapbook paper, printables, and that sort of thing. Um, partly because I think these are easy to find things, things you probably already have at home. You can download the printables from Etsy. Everything that I'm using in this video is going to be linked up in the description box below, but I'm using printables, uh, this printable right here for my cover, and I'm also going to be using some printables from the Easter and Spring collections at KB and Friends for some of the other elements in this journal. But this cover is from, and it's linked up the exact name. I, I don't know the exact name off the top of my head. I think it's something like printable retro spring coloring book covers, but I know it has coloring book covers in the title um, of the listing. And these are about five by seven. So our journals are gonna be about five by seven. And I just have some scrapbook paper here that is a little bit bigger than the printable cover that I'm gonna mount it to. 
You could also mount this to chipboard if you want it to be even sturdier. So, you know, the, this journal is not going to be like, you know, heirloom quality. It's going to have a cardstock cover. So it's not something that you want to throw in your bag or anything like that. But keeping it on a table or on a shelf or something, it, it'll stay, it'll stay fine. I don't think the covers will, will get bent up. If you really want to be ambitious and you've made journals before, you could still make a ring bound journal and use a little golden book for the cover. It's the exact same technique and process. Um, so here's one I made last summer and it's with a little golden book cover that I hole punched. So I just removed the cover and punched it, but you need a really heavy duty hole punch to get through this book board. So like a crocodile, but everything else is exactly the same. But I figured most people um, will have scrapbook paper and could access the printables because it's just a digital download. So I wanted to start with that, make it super simple. And like I said, something that even kids could do. So I just wanted to kind of mention that about the cover and then I'm going to talk about our pages inside the journal before we start building anything. So I'm going to put this cover to the side right now and talk about the inside pages. So I don't have all of the pages uh, visible on my um, video. I can um, see that I don't, I can't fit my entire table here. But what I did was I created um, kind of two guidelines. And I just want to say up front, and I, I say this all the time, you've probably heard me say this before, there is no right or wrong way to make any kind of journal. Um, I just kind of came up with some guidelines just to simplify the process and just sort of give you a framework to work with. But this is all just completely optional. Don't get hung up on like following the rules because there truly is no right or wrong way to do things. Um, but for this particular tutorial, um, you can see in the description box, I kind of recommended five different categories, I guess you could say, of pages. So what I recommend doing is collecting those five different kinds of pages, and I'm going to show this to you in just a second, and divide them out into piles by type. So the first pile is scrapbook paper. So I have 10 sheets of scrapbook paper, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this when we get to the little formula I'm gonna share with you. But I guess I could mention here, I'm using um, 10 pieces of scrapbook paper that coordinate with um, my cover. So whatever you decide to do for your cover, if you do go with this printable, you could always, if you don't wanna do the printable, just use scrapbook paper and maybe just embellish um, your cover with your scrapbook papers and maybe some um, die cuts or other embellishments, but use your cover to kind of decide the color scheme for your journal. And I do that with all of my journals, whether it's a little golden book or a traveler's notebook, I always let the colors in the cover dictate the color scheme that I use inside, starting with the scrapbook papers. So choose your scrapbook papers to match your cover. And I'm suggesting 10 pieces. Again, just to make this really kind of like simple math, I suggested 10 pieces of each of the different kinds of elements that we're going to put in the journal, but you can use more of one kind than another if you just happen to have more of that sort of thing. Um, again, it's just just a suggestion. So I've got 10 pieces here and all of these pieces are cut to the exact same size and they are all cut to the size of my cover, the um, the biggest piece here of the cover. And I'm going to explain why I did that, um, if that was intentional, and I'm going to explain that when we get to that part in a couple of minutes. So those 10 pieces um, in your first pile. And then in your second pile are ledger papers or notebook paper. So I have a lot of ledger paper because I make junk journals. If you do not make junk journals and you don't have ledger paper, maybe you're just getting started or you just kind of came across this tutorial and you wanted to try to make a ring bound journal, you don't have to use vintage ledger paper. You can use 
notebook paper. You could use um, paper from like a legal pad or um, I've got some graph paper here. If you have a graph paper pad, you can use loose leaf paper, whatever you have. If you are interested in vintage um, ledger papers, there are sellers on Etsy that sell them um, in packs kind of like this where there's like a variety of sizes. Um, so that would be like a vintage ledger paper. That's what you would search for on Etsy. You can also find ve uh, ledger pads on eBay. So that's another source. And again, this is not like an absolute requirement to have in a junk journal. I just like to add lined paper or ledger paper to my journals for a couple of reasons. One, it's a great space for writing. So if you wanna do any kind of long form, like actual journaling, it's great for that, obviously. But it also breaks up all the busyness that you have in the scrapbook papers and the book pages. You know, there's lots of illustrations and graphics on these things they are very colorful. And this just sort of breaks it up with a little bit of neutral color. So I do like adding that um, where I can. So that's just a suggestion also. So those are our first two piles. So the third pile are book pages. Again, totally optional. Use what you have. Um, I actually, I obviously have a lot of vintage books. So I have pages from some children's books. This is um, just a scrap actually from a large children's book. A dictionary page, a cookbook page. This is actually um, junk mail. This is from a catalog that was in my recycle bin. So you can use junk mail. Um, junk journals originally started out as um, journals that had pages just where you basically were recycling your junk mail <laughs> and you know papers that would get normally thrown out. And you can absolutely use any of those kinds of things to add some different kinds of pages to your journals. And then I have a sewing pattern catalog page there just because it's just what I have on hand. So use what you have. You can also, just like I mentioned with the ledger papers, you can go to Etsy and find sellers selling packs of book pages. And they will often have a whole different variety of sizes and pages from different kinds of books in them. So if that's something that you want to add to your journal, you can do that also. And that's our third pile, our book pages. So the fourth and fifth piles you can't see, so I'm going to bring them over here because I can't fit them in the... Um, view here of my video. So the fourth pile is ephemera. So again, I have a lot of ephemera because I make journals. If you don't, you um, might just want to, you can either buy a vintage ephemera pack. <laughs> if you go to Etsy or eBay, you'll find sellers selling vintage ephemera. Um, on Instagram, there are some sellers also, and you can buy them in packs. Or you can just use some more of, you know, the other piles that we talked about. Um, so I am using a variety of sizes here, but my smallest size is probably the, a playing card size. So two and a half by three and a half. The idea here is that these are going to actually be pages. So when you're talking about pages or what I'm talking about pages here, I'm talking about items that are going to just, that you're going to flip like a page. So it doesn't have to actually be a traditional page that you would write on or add photos to like a scrapbook or that kind of thing. I'm talking specifically about just things that you're adding to your journal that you're going to flip and I'm counting that as a page. So you don't want really tiny kinds of ephemera like um, for example like tickets. I've got some things over here. Tickets and, and milk caps. Little pieces like this are great for decorating your pages. So you want pieces that are a little bit bigger that have enough space for you to hole punch and that you can kind of flip through. And it just adds just more interest and color and um, it's a smaller size. So you kind of get that layered effect that junk journals have when you look through them. And we're gonna talk a lot about that in a few minutes. This really helps kind of achieve that, that look. And the last pile that I suggested is journaling cards and die cuts. So these are all printables. And I love to add printables to my journals as much as I love to add vintage 
pages and ephemera to my journals. I love using ephemera, especially when it looks like this, <laughs> because this is just, it's my style and it's a great way to add your particular style to a journal and it's really colorful. I love color in my journals, so I can really achieve that easily with printables. And these journaling cards, I'm calling them journaling cards because you can journal on the back of them. And a traditional journaling card is this size, like three by four. These are a little bit smaller, like two and a half by three and a half. But just having a variety of sizes and colors and things is gonna be a fun thing to punch, hole punch and add to your journal. And same thing with the die cuts. You don't have to use these just for decorating pages. And I'm not going to decorate this journal. Um, at the end, I'll probably add some things to the edges of the pages, but I'm not going to decorate the pages. Otherwise, this would be like a three hour video. <laughs> um, but you can use these little these die cuts and these aren't little. These are pretty big die cuts. They are perfect for punching and just adding to um, your rings as another little thing to flip. And it's just it's fun um, to do that. And I think kids would really love that that aspect just adding all the little fun things that you can flip and it's part of what makes junk journals interactive and that is one of the kind of hallmarks i guess you could say of junk journals is that they have a lot of interactive elements to them so those are the five piles that we have um, so if you can do that and separate all of your types of pages out that will go a long way to war towards making this not be so overwhelming. Kind of gives you a little bit of structure. And I find that when things are new, um, the more structure you can give yourself, the less overwhelming it feels. And hopefully after you've made a few, you can sort of drop the framework, the structure, the little formula I'm gonna share with you and just kind of go with your gut, use your imagination, your creativity and all of that. But I find when you're very, very new and a, a true beginner, that having that kind of structure and framework at first really kind of helps um, just remove the overwhelm and a lot of the kind of thinking and the decision making that you have to do and gets you to actually come up with a finished product you know I hope that makes sense um, and then you'll have success so once you make that and you see the whole finished product together at the end it'll kind of like click for you and I think you'll be able to let go of any kind of like structure or framework because you'll kind of see how everything works together and how you put it together all right I'm starting to ramble so let me see um, what my next part is that I wanted to share with you um, before I get all right so once you have your Paper is divided up into your five piles. We're just going to kind of put that to the side for a minute and make our cover. So this part is really simple. And uh, you might be noticing this black smudge on there. There's something wrong with my printer right now. And it's when I print color, it's leaking black ink. So don't know what's going on with that. But I didn't want to print another cover because it does use a little bit of ink there. <laughs> There's a lot of color in that. So um, all you're going to do is... Like I mentioned before, cut yourself some scrapbook paper that is a little bit bigger than the printable if you're using that. And like I said, this is a little bit, you'll have to measure it um, or just eyeball it. Just lay your printable on top of your scrapbook paper and cut around it so you have a little bit of a border. You can have that be as big or as small as you want. But I do recommend having your scrapbook paper um, pile pieces be the same size about as your cover. So I'm just going to use double-sided tape to attach my printable to my scrapbook paper. And like I said, if you want this to be even sturdier, you could mount this on chipboard. That would make it quite sturdy. And I printed um, a front cover and a back cover. So this was the piece that I chose for my back cover. You'll see if you use the printables, there are um, several different options but I just chose that and then I have the same scrapbook paper for the front and the back and I'm just going to do this kind of quickly and then we will hole punch this when we're all together here ok 
Okay, that's our front. And then the same thing for the back. The really involved part is going to be the inside pages, but I hope that I can make that process for you a lot simpler than it probably seems. And that part is, is the really fun part. If you can really just kind of let go and let yourself put the pages together, put some music on and just kind of go with it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting to that part with you guys in just a minute. And after we build this, the covers and hole punch the covers, we're going to sit them to the side and we can grab the one of the covers later and use that as a guide to punch our holes for all the pages inside. So I'm just going to line up my front and back covers. <laughs> Make sure you have it going the right direction. So there's the front cover and the back cover and all the pages will be inside. So you want to make sure they're going the right way. So you put your holes <laughs> on the right side. Now, so here's another thing. Um, let me mention the binder rings really quickly. So I'm using one inch binder rings for this. Um, you can get these on Amazon. I will link that up, um, link a source on in the description box below to a source on Amazon. I'm using one inch binder rings. You can use bigger ones if you would like. I like to start with one inch rings because for this journal, the amount of papers I have here, like I said, it's about 50 or so. And that's going to give you a journal that's about like three quarters of an inch thick. So this journal here has about 53 pages and when I'm saying pages I'm counting every little flip thing so you know each one of these I'm counting as a page and I have about like 53 of those in here and that made like a, a three-quarter inch thick journal and that's on one inch binder rings so if you want to add more pages if you want a thicker journal a chunkier journal you can use bigger rings the nice thing about um, binder rings is that you can change them out later so if you start adding more pages and it starts to get too hard to turn the pages you can always switch your rings out to bigger rings and th the other nice thing about ring bound journals that you don't get with sewn journals is you can add and remove the pages and some people like this style actually better because they can um, remove pages to work on them so this is an, a style that a lot of people actually prefer over the sewn kind because once you sew the pages into a little golden book journal for example they're not coming out so that's just one of the benefits of this style journal. The drawback to this style of journal um, really is because of the holes in the pages, especially with the ledger papers or the, the book pages. If they're, they're vintage especially, they can be kind of brittle and thin. And so the pages, you know, have a tendency to tear if you're not careful. Now, you can get around that by putting reinforcers on all the holes in your pages. Um, that's uh, an extra step and kind of a lot of work if you're going to do that on every single page. But if you really want to make sure that your pages aren't going to tear or be less likely to tear, you can do that. And um, if you have a reinforcer punch, that's kind of an economical way to do it. Instead of buying like reinforcer stickers because you would need so many for this number of pages, you can use um, a punch and punch these out of cardstock, which also would give you extra strength because the cardstock is thicker than like a sticker. And then just use like a glue stick or whatever and glue your reinforcers to the holes. And if you don't do that, another option for that would be to line the edges of your pages with washi tape before you hole punch. And that will give them extra strength also. I'm not going to do that in this video, but those are just a couple ways you can get around that not being super strong, um, the pages being super sturdy. So I am going to make two holes in my junk journal for my binder rings. I find that 
two holes is just fine. Two binder rings is just fine as far as stability goes. Um, I know some people like to use three. Some people use more. You can use however many you like. I don't like using more binder rings because I find opening and closing the rings and adding papers to it gets kind of fiddly and it sort of drives me crazy. <laughs> um, so that's just my personal preference. So like this journal here that I made, I only have two rings on it and I find it's plenty sturdy enough. Um, I don't find like the pages are sloppy or sliding around at all. And like I said, I just, I would rather fool with fewer holes and like trying to line up things and add and remove pages with fewer holes. That's just my personal preference. So that's why I wanted to just, uh, share with you. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to add two um, holes here, not three, but you can do however many you like. And I'm just kind of thinking where I want to place it. I'm not measuring um, to have this be exact. If I was making this for someone, I would totally measure this and be more exact. Um, and I'm kind of thinking instead of having them like really far apart, I'm going to have them a little bit closer together because some of the smaller pieces of ephemera, I might want to have two holes in them. Um, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. It doesn't really matter. Like something like this, if the holes are really far apart, I would have to have the piece like just with one hole in it, which is fine. And I'm going to have a lot of, of the ephemera pieces just having one hole punched in them instead of two. So it's just like a small flap. But if I want to have the option of having two holes in the <laughs> ephemera, I probably want them to be a tiny bit closer together. That's what I'm trying to say. So, um, all right, let me just go ahead and punch this. Line that up. Oh, sorry there. All right. And then you're just going to come in about a half inch. Oh, wow, that's really hard. I can't do both at the same time. What am I thinking? <laughs> so probably just punch through the one, the front cover first, and then you can line it up. I knew that. I just kind of forgot that for a minute. <laughs> All right. You probably want to line this up better. Use a ruler to make sure like your holes are aligned, but I just want to make sure you guys get the idea. This is not the most important part of the tutorial. Um, in my eyes anyway, I really want to get to the inside pages. So we are going to just call this good and put this to the side. All right. So oops, I just threw it on the floor. I have to get that in a minute. Okay, <laughs> so now we are on to building the inside pages. And this is where this little formula comes into play. And I'm calling this formula stacks and layers. So this is just a way of organizing your junk journal project if you are brand new to doing this. And like I said, I'm hoping that this is something that you can just sort of drop this formula later um, and just kind of go with your own creativity and imagination when you put your pages together. But this is a way that you can sort of organize yourself and have just a little framework to follow to kind of eliminate a lot of the, the decision making that kind of goes into how do you put the pages together, especially when you're trying to make your journal look like aesthetically pleasing. So the pages, they kind of flow nicely and like all the colors coordinate on the different um, pages because you're going to see and this is something I want to explain and it'll be easier when I show you what I'm talking about. But, you know, junk journals have like a layered look to them. So when you're looking at one page, you can usually see other pages behind it. So, um, and like I said, I'll show you this in just a minute. And it just, it looks nice if all of the pages that you are seeing at one time all coordinate basically in their color scheme. So that is why I was talking about having your scrapbook papers all be the same size. So let me go back to this, this little name I came up with, stacks and layers. What we're going to do is we're going to create 10 stacks. And I'm using 10 because I have 10 pieces of scrapbook paper. And each one of these papers is going to form the base 
of one stack. So however many scrapbook papers you have is how many stacks you're going to create. So in this particular tutorial, I've got 10 scrapbook papers. So I'm going to create 10 stacks. And every stack is going to start with a scrapbook paper as the base. The reason I like to do that with the scrapbook paper as the base is, well, it's for a couple reasons. Um, one, because these are all cut to the same size as my cover, it's going to provide extra stability to the journal. Because these other pages inside are, are a lot thinner than these, the journal can be kind of um, flimsy, especially because they're not folded into signatures like a, a traditional junk journal, which has a lot more stability for that reason. Um, this will provide a lot more stability. So we're gonna start with our biggest pieces being the same size as our cover, and all the other pieces that we add to it are going to be a little bit smaller. And again, that is not a rule that you have to follow. You can do that differently. But for the sake of just making this simple, I'm going to have my base piece be my largest piece, uh, my largest page size in this journal. And it's partly to kind of give it that that extra stability because this is our heaviest paper. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got 10 of these. So what I would recommend you do, and I can't do this here because I don't have enough space, but if you are working on like a dining room table or a floor, you can spread this out and kind of make yourself like a little assembly line. So what I would do is I would take all 10 pieces of your scrapbook paper, your base pe uh, pages, and lay them out individually in a row. So you're going to have 10 pieces of scrapbook paper going across in a row. Each one of those, like I said, is your base uh, layer in your stacks. So what we're going to do is the layered part of the stacks and layers is all of your other pieces. So each one of these is going to be a layer that is going to go on top of each scrapbook paper base. Because, and this is what's nice about having all of these already separated out into individual piles. What I'm going to suggest you do, especially if you are brand new to doing this, is choose one page from each of your piles and you're gonna place it on top of your base layer. So every single scrapbook base, scrapbook paper base, is going to get one piece from each of these piles placed on top of it. And that's gonna be one stack. And you're gonna do the same thing for every single one of these bases until you use up all of your items or however many items you feel good with. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm suggesting just to use one of each. You could add more, you know, if you feel more comfortable, you can add more pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and do this, and you'll see as I go along what I'm talking about. But you can add, you know, maybe a few more ephemera pieces or journaling cards or whatever piece you want from any of these piles. You can add more than just one. Or you could start with just adding one of each of these items from each of these piles to your base and then go back after you've done your 10 stacks and then add more of some of the others if you have like pieces left over in your ephemera or your journaling cards or what have you. So hopefully this is making sense so far to you and we can go ahead and get started. So let me just move my, my piles over here and because I can't really set this up assembly style I'm going to start with just you know one base layer at a time and build my stacks that way. So the other great thing, I don't think I mentioned this, um, about using your scrapbook paper as your base is scrapbook paper, if you're choosing really colorful paper or whatever scrapbook paper you have, it's going to have some kind of colors in it, I'm sure. And that will help you decide what pieces from each of your different piles to add to that layer. So let the colors in the base layer dictate 
what items you choose to put on top of it. Again, that is not written in stone. Um, you know, it's something you have to do, but if you're just starting out, that will help kind of simplify the decision-making process so you don't get stuck like trying to choose the perfect thing to go on top. I hear this over and over um, when people are new to junk journals that the one thing that really stops them is perfectionism and they worry about doing it right or being the worry that they're going to be disappointed in the way it looks when they're finished. That it's not going to look as good to them as I don't know, I guess if you're comparing yourself to somebody else's work or it's just not how it, you envision it in your mind. And I will tell you, like my finished products almost never look exactly like how I envision it in my mind. You know, our minds are so creative and it is a challenge to get your vision in your mind to translate into the thing you're making. I mean, that's like the biggest challenge for, for artists um, to do that. But it's part of that fun creative process and the more that you do it the the more likely you are to really start seeing the visions you have in your mind come to life in the product and the projects that you do but the only way to get there is to start and you have to start somewhere and you know, um, just start creating and don't get stuck in trying to perfect it in your mind first before you ever get started because it just, it just doesn't work that way. You really have to start making things in order to learn how things go together and um, what you like, you know, what, what appeals to you. So I could just kind of go off on a tangent there. So sorry about that. Um, that is probably a video for another day, right? But anyway, that's a, a good starting point. So every single one of these pages has a different kind of, well, these all have kind of a similar color scheme because I chose papers from the same uh, collection or maybe just two different collections. But like this one just has like orange and green. So I will probably look for some elements in my other piles that have orange and green for this stack. So that is where you want to start. Now, as you probably are noticing that I have some pages here that will fit in this area. So all the pages that and elements that I'm going to put on top of this base need to be smaller so it fits like within the parameters of the cover, right? Um, some of these are naturally small enough just as they are, they don't need to be trimmed down. But some of these pieces are really big and a lot bigger than this cover, as you can see here. And those need to be trimmed down. Now there's a couple of different things you can do. You can trim things. Oh, I don't have my trimmer out. I have to grab that. Um, you can trim the pages. You can also fold some of the pages. So you have like a little fold out area. You don't have to just cut them all down to like a rectangular or square shape. You can fold things to keep them inside your journal. So, um, you know, I'll talk a little bit about that as I build these. I did not like plan out how I'm going to do my pages at all. I tend to um, talk about perfectionism. <laughs> I do spend a lot of time like putting things together in a visual way, but I just that is the part of the creative process that I love the most. So I spend a lot of time on it, not because I'm trying to make it look perfect, but just, I just have fun and just enjoy that part of the process so much. But I'll try not to do that too much here, just so you can kind of get the point and see how these stacks come together. So I'm just gonna literally start with what I have right on the top of this stack. Now, the other thing I'm gonna mention here is you don't have to have every layer that you do be a little bit smaller than the one before it. So it looks kind of like a pyramid sort of um, way. Does that make sense? Like, oh, I guess you can't answer me that, huh? Um, <laughs> doing a live class would be a lot easier because I could let you guys ask questions and things. But you know, if you do have questions as I'm going through this, please leave them in the comment box. I promise I will answer any questions that you have. But what I was gonna say is, let me just do this as an example. You know, it doesn't have to be like this, where every single piece is a little bit smaller than the one before it. You can do it that way. And if that makes it easier for you for this first go round, go ahead and do that. But I just wanted to mention that it's okay if some of 
the layers get hidden because once it all comes together and you're flipping through the book, it's, it's really not going to matter. So just kind of do what feels right. And the other thing, because this is ring bound, you can sort of scoot your layers and have some of the layers be like more towards the top of the base layer, some more towards the bottom. So you'll see like other parts peeking out, maybe not the whole thing all the way around, but just maybe like the top or the bottom. So there's a lot of things that you can kind of play around with and consider, but don't get hung up on that. Just make yourself some, some stacks. If you're feeling like really stuck, literally just take like one thing from each stack, like I'm doing right here. And I just took the top thing off of each stack and I didn't even look to see if the like colors go together. And you know what, the way these are right now are fine. There may be other pages that might look even more perfect with the base layer, but don't let that make you get stuck. I know that's another thing that sometimes trips people up is they're like, well, what if that's not like the best choice for that page? You could spend your whole life like trying to make one page look absolutely perfect. And it's, it's going to look great if you just follow a couple little guidelines like choosing some colors. And you can use those other elements that you didn't choose on another stack. The point is just to kind of get it done. I promise you are gonna be happy with the whole finished product, um, whatever you choose. So, all right, I'm gonna put this stack to the side. So I've got my first little stack and just, like I said, if you have an assembly line, if you can do it that way, that would be really great and really helpful. I know you want me to be quiet and just like get started making things. I'm gonna actually grab my trimmer here. Because uh, I forgot that part. Okay. <laughs> so like this piece here, I'm just choosing the next in my, my ledger paper pile here and it's too big. So just for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna trim the bottom of this one off instead of doing any kind of like folding or anything so i'm just going to not that you need to watch me trim everything scoot that to the side i really don't have a, a huge work surface and then you can see the sides too um too wide i'm actually going to cut it off this side because this little rough edge might kind of get hooked up anyway so all right that's that layer and then i'm gonna put this one on top next and let's see i gotta make myself some room here and then on top of that let's do um bingo card and let's see. I know you probably wanna see what I'm looking through. I know sometimes it's helpful to see like a uh, process, like a decision-making process um, and this one on top. I'm not thinking a whole lot about each layer. I just wanna kinda of get these together and then you can always, and this is the beauty of ring bound too, um, after you make your, your stacks and your layers, even if you've hole punched them and you've added them to your journal, if you see something that you think would look better on another page, you can move it around. So you're not like stuck on anything here. And um, I'm trying to decide where I wanna put this, this layer. I think I'm gonna turn them face down and do it like that. Okay, so here's my next layer. So let's see, I'm really, really tight on space here. All right, so for this piece that's too big, this one I might do like a little um, fold-in area. So it's gonna get hole punched here, and then this I'm gonna fold in. And this is something that you can do either as you go along like I'm doing right now, or you can take all of your like big pieces and cut them down or fold them down before you even get started. And then you can just really kind of blow through um, making your your stacks, but that's just um, up to you, whatever you think. So now I'm looking through and seeing what I might wanna put here. So like on this next um, layer, I'm probably not gonna choose this paper. 
from this pile because the colors of the backgrounds on those two pages are too similar. Um, so let me use this page right here. And I like this because the white background kind of matches that white paper there because this is darker. And the background of this kind of mimics the straw in this hat, so I kind of like that. Now obviously this is too big. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention is you don't have to keep them in the order um, of the piles unless that makes it more simpler for you. So you can go through your piles and add each layer in the order that you have your piles laid out, or you can change them up depending on you know what other what other pieces you're choosing to go on there. So this is um this is just from a catalog from my junk mail. So I am actually just going to trim this one down. I don't want to take too much time on like the decision making process. Um I need to cut more of that off. Because I want to get to the point where we put this together and you can really see what this looks like when it's finished. Okay, so this piece, <laughs> I'm not cutting enough off. Put that there. And then let's see here. Look through my ephemera here. And what do I have? Maybe, hmm. let's see. I'm gonna do this green here, picks up a little bit of the green. So it's kind of what I do when I'm making journals, whether it's this kind of journal or the sewn, um, sewn binding kind of journals, I let the pages around it kind of help me decide what pages to put with it. And, um, you know, just let kind of color be your guide that way. And it really like simplifies the decision-making process quite a bit. So this one, I think I will grab something that's got pink and green. Um, maybe that. Like I said, I don't want to get too, too caught up on that. And I'm just going to leave that one like that. I would probably go back and add a couple other things, but I just want to make this super simple to show you guys. You can just do one thing from each pile and that's really all that you need to do to get this going. So next page in my piles, um, this one with the yellow, which I like, there's a lot of uh, yellow in this background. And I think what I'm going to do is fold this one in. Now, when you're folding papers in your journal, actually, I might want to do this one this way. The one thing I want to mention when you're doing ring bound and you're folding something, don't have the end meet the end of the other paper because you need to have a space for the, the rings and you want to be able to open and close your folded part. So that needs to stop like right about here. So it's not getting caught up on the rings. So just kind of keep that in mind. This one I'm gonna actually fold back so I get all of that yellow. And then on top of that, I'm looking at this pile here and I probably wanna do some contrasting colors. Um, might do that. And yeah, this one I am going to, so I gotta consider that also for the, for the rings. Um, i trying to remember how I punched that one before. I think I went through there. Mm -hmm. And this one I'm actually gonna make into a pocket, I think. So I'm gonna tack those sides down later and that can be a pocket with a little fold out. And then on top of that, maybe add this guy. And sometimes when I'm trying to decide what goes together, if, let's see, if I have something else I can use as an example. Um, well, if I had something underneath of this that was animals, like say it was this, for example, I probably wouldn't add this on top because there's two animals near each other. Um, again, it's not a rule. It's just aesthetically, I just like to kind of 
change it up and have things be not matching but coordinating so like in this one I think this would look cute because it's got the colors but then there's flowers and then an animal so we have different kind of elements here and then the colors all coordinate okay so that's that pile and for this one um let me just trim the bottom and the sides off of that so i have a lot more here than um 10 pieces in my ephemera and my like journaling card and die cut pile and I have fewer of, and these already have holes in them. So actually what I'm gonna do on that is just cut the holes off. It's probably not gonna line up to the holes that I punch later. And I lost my train of thought, what was I saying? Um, hmm. Well, shoot, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Must not have been important, right? <laughs> ah, um, trying to decide if I wanna keep it like that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, um, it might come back to me, gosh. All right, so I'm getting my piles mixed up here. Let me move my ephemera pile over and look at my book pages. All right, I'm just gonna do this one next. And this kind of pop is that. You could have this stick out of the top of your, your journal. If it's something that's tall and you like the way that looks, you can have that kind of peeking out of the top of your journal. Um, probably in this situation, I am not going to do that this time, but like I said, there really is no, there are no rules. Just kind of go with your gut, trust your gut, allow yourself to make mistakes, try things out. And you know, the first time you make something, I can promise you, you're not going to love it. Um, you know, the first few journals that you make, you're probably not going to be thrilled with them or you're going to make mistakes. You're going to see mistakes that you made or things that you you think, you know, next time I would not do that. I would do that differently next time, that kind of thing. And that is totally normal. Um, it doesn't mean that you're not good at it or that you don't know what you're doing. Um, don't let that stop you. I promise you that you're not going to like the first few things that you make. It's just kind of like, that's just the way it goes. And you have to start somewhere. And it's hard for me to talk and, and make things at the same time. <laughs> not as easy as it looks. Um, so yeah, you have to just start where you are. And that is the only way that you will ever improve your art is to start making it. And I'm actually gonna cut that down a little bit. It really is just so important not to let worries and fear of judgment or not being good enough stop you because nobody starts out being great at at what they do no matter what their craft is no matter how much natural talent they have nobody starts out being really great at their craft all right so let's see um i think i want to actually do this as a little fold that little line there makes me kind of think of a little fold so i don't know kind of like that and then because both these backgrounds are, are white, I kind of feel like something in between there would be good that has some color in it. So let's see. Um, I've got a Rolodex card. No, I don't want to do yellow. Um, maybe this pink that picks up some of the pink back there. And just do something kind of like that. And... Um, Let me grab a die cut here, maybe. Let's see. See, the die cuts I have here all have, oh, sorry, I'm off the camera. They all have little animals on them. And I've already got an animal there. So I'm kind of thinking, no, that's not what I'm going to do there. And I would maybe do this, but I don't know. The crow feels like spring to me, not really um, 
Easter necessarily. I've got black ink all over that from my printer that is acting up. I think I'm gonna add this little um, journaling piece there and then maybe one more one more element here so i'm adding something so a second thing from one of my piles here so i'm gonna look at my ephemera oh i know what i want to add here this seed packet it's because it kind of reminds me of like the crow in the garden and um kind of picks up that theme there and i might put this one on top and just kind of eyeballing like how it might get punched in there before i even punch it and just kind of line things up like that so and as you go along making the stacks you might feel a little more brave you know when you get to do a few of these and feel more comfortable with adding multiple things from the different piles and starting to match things up hopefully um so I really like this paper a lot and I want to use as much of it as I can. So I'm going to fold this in and cut the bottom off. And I'm gonna let these holes be here and hope it fits. If not, I'll just punch extra holes. That is totally fine. And this one, I want more of that background to show. So I'm actually gonna bring that down a little bit and cut it off at, at 20 there just kind of saying that out loud to tell myself where to cut that at. Okay, so that goes there and what would look good on top. So let's see, this page right here I think would look great because of the orange and the green and the scrapbook paper. So let's see, um, how do I want to trim that? I think I'm going to trim top of this page off. Need the top and the bottom and see if I can fit most of the illustrations and graphics on this. And then obviously it's too wide so I'm going to cut um, it there. I never worry about cutting some of the words off because for me this isn't about reading the story. It's about the artwork on the pages, not everybody feels that way. So you have to decide what makes sense for you. And um, I mean, it's not critical if a little bit hangs out, but for our purposes, I think I am going to keep everything within the parameter of the cover. Oh, it's still too big. <laughs> All right, one more cut here. Okay, because what I'm focusing on here is the illustrations and the colors there so make myself some room let's see what we could do with this so it's okay that this paper is underneath and you don't see it because when you open the page you're going to see it so it doesn't have to be you know every layer visible on your stack some parts can be hidden and it just adds a lot of variety if you don't have every single stack look exactly the same or be in the same kind of order. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. But if it makes you just kind of be able to go through the process and get finished by keeping everything exactly the same, then do that. This is the first one and it doesn't mean you can't make more and learn from this one and do things differently the next time. So the important thing is that you are doing things and trying things and not just waiting and, you know, waiting till you feel ready because you'll never feel ready, I promise. You just kind of have to get out there and make yourself do things and try things. All right, um, I like to do a lot of pep talking, <laughs> as you can probably tell. So let's see, um, I think I'll just leave him like that. No, actually I'm not. I'm gonna put one more thing behind there. I want some color because I've got two white backgrounds near each other. So I want to add a little bit of color. So I've got greens and oranges and yellows kind of going on here. So I'm thinking maybe um, something with some green. Let's see, hmm. I don't really have anything in my ephemera pieces. So 
I might just go, actually I like this. This is something a little bit different. Um, yeah, like you can just play with these things all day long. And then I'll probably put some things inside. This is like a little glassine envelope here. So I'll put some things inside of there. And then next we have this. So I am down to my last book page and I used up all of my ledger paper. So I only had seven pieces of ledger paper. Um, but you can already see, like this is my stack. I've just been laying my stacks together and um, it's already coming together pretty well. Drop those pieces there. So I've already used up my ledger paper and I only have one piece of um, my book pages left. So, and I've got two pieces of the base page. So you can just kind of get creative and take some pieces from some of the other stacks and kind of spread them out a little bit more, or you can just add more of your ephemera or things to those stacks. Or if I was not doing a video, I would probably go grab some more papers, <laughs> grab some like ledger papers or what have you. So this is a sewing pattern catalog page and it's enormous. It's like, I think they're almost 13 inches tall, but I really wanted to add this in here. And what I'm going to do is I want to also make this into a pocket. That's what I do with these sometimes. And I don't want to cut this down. I'm actually going to fold it and I'm going to show you how you can take a really big page from a big book or catalog and you can fold it and then punch it in the fold and then you'll have like a page that folds out um, just for something a little bit different. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to fold it up first. So I'm, I'm going to have to fold it up and trim the bottom off and make it into a pocket. So I will use my, my page here as a guide for where I need to have the bottom of my page be. So kind of like here. And then I'm going to trim some of this off and then we're gonna have a pocket. So let me grab my trimmer here. Probably right about there. Okay. Um, so yeah, if I fold that in half, it's going to fit inside of our journal. And then I will hole punch that and then I'll go back in later and close the sides in. So I have two pockets there. So we've got that there and I need to pop some things on top. So let's see. Um, <laughs> Flashcards make great card uh, pages, I should say. Nice and sturdy things that you can add. And let's see. You know, when I'm not doing a video, I can just kind of think of things that I have in my stash and kind of be like, oh yeah, let me go grab, grab that or pull out my box of, you know, whatever kinds of ephemera. But when I was putting this video together, I just kind of grabbed some things that I thought I would maybe use in this journal. So I'm kind of limited to just what I have on my table here. This is not my usual work table where I film videos. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. But that, that'll work. This kind of like little stack here is fine. Oh, can't grab that. Okay. And then we have two more bases left, but I'm going to stop here and start hole punching because I think you get the idea. This video is getting super, super long and I want to put this together. So this is where you can kind of hole punch everything, add it to your cover, 
And then you can go back and as you flip through your journal, you can see maybe where there's spaces where you might want to add some other things. Sometimes it's a little bit easier when you kind of see it all together and really kind of uh, finish it off from there. Oh yeah, I forgot I dropped my cover on the floor. <laughs> okay. You're probably hearing some noise with my microphone right there. Sorry about that. I had to take my mic off. All right, let me get situated here. And this is the really fun part when it all starts to come together. So, you know, let me see. I think what I'm going to do for this very first layer is, so this is my first layer. Hang on a second. Let me make some space. So our cover. These are my stacks right here. And the scrapbook paper is the bottom of my, my stack. So I'm going to just kind of line these guys up like this, pretty close to the edge. And I'm going to use my cover. Now what you could also do, and this is actually, I do recommend doing this and I'm not going to do it because I don't have um, an extra piece right here. What you probably want to do before you start punching is take your cover that has the holes punched in it and then grab a piece of scrapbook paper that is cut to the same size and hole punch that and use that as your guide. Don't keep using your cover as your guide because you'll find when you're hole punching that you sometimes punch a little bit extra um, beyond the holes and you may even need to replace your scrapbook paper that you're using as your template um, because the holes will start to get big and you don't want your cover holes to get kind of messed up so I'm not going to do that here but you might want to have like a separate template for punching the holes for your pages so your cover doesn't get misshapen. The holes in your cover don't get misshapen. Hopefully that makes sense. So, um, with that, and then I'm gonna take these smaller pieces so I can really see where they are and decide where I want to put them. Um, so this part can be pretty time consuming because you can really just kind of get creative with where you want to put each of your your little pieces and um, yeah I think this one I will punch in two places so then I can kind of reassemble this And you can play around with the order that you do your layers in. Put this one next. And then this guy was down here. So that is my first layer, my first stack like that. And then this is the cover and I'm trying to decide if I want to put them in the rings now or if I want to wait till I have a few layers. Kind of, let me see how this goes. This part can be a little bit fiddly until you really get it going. So we'll see how that goes. I'm just gonna kind of have that sitting there and then we'll, we will, this is the back cover, put this here and then we can just kind of add to it as we punch along. And maybe I'll use the back cover to punch this page here. So, just for the sake of time, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and punch all the layers at one time. And you can do that too, just kind of depends how thick your layers are and if you wanna do it that way. You might get a little cockeyed under there, but I don't wanna to take too much time punching so you can see this kind of come together. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's see, that one is next. Sometimes it's easier just to kind of add them individually, but however you can get them on there. And then I'm taking my next stack. So after you make all of your layered stacks, 
you just need to combine them all and all of them will come together to be the pages in your journal and I hope that that kind of framework helps you kind of visualize how pages get put together in, in journals. And hopefully, like I said, eventually you won't even have to really kind of follow any sort of framework like that. You can just sort of go with your gut when you kind of put your pages together and you'll have a feel for how things look great together and really let color be your guide more than anything. And you kind of can't go wrong when you do that. All right, this one's going to be thicker, so I'm going to need to punch that card separately. This would be a really great place for me to speed up the video. And I may try to play with that today and see if I can do that. You guys know I am like a total novice when it comes to editing video. But I know this part is going to be really kind of tedious to, <laughs> to watch. So I'm going to see if I can figure that part out. And this is really fun. I love these postalettes in here. I love any little like fold out areas. Um, sometimes they're called fold notes, but um, those are called also postalettes. Okay, so now we're gonna add that stack. So you just work through all of your stacks and add each one, one by one. So let me know if in the comments, if this was helpful to you. Um, yeah, let me know, just give me some feedback on that. Let's see, this might be too thick with the time card in there. And I love using all different kinds of ephemera because different ephemera has different thicknesses and so it just adds a lot of different kind of textures in your your journals. It's one of the really neat things about junk journals is all the different paper textures. You've got like kind of soft almost brittle like vintage children's book pages to like sturdier things like time cards and uh, just adds so much visual interest to, to journals. And um, you know, if you're just starting out and you are trying to build up your, your stash, I will try to remember to link up some some lists that I have, like I have one that's called, um, it's a, a list of seven books that I suggest for just getting, if you're just getting started, that you can look for to collect that are vintage. And you can start um, having some papers to pull from those books to create pages. And, you know, you don't need to have a ton of books. If you have these seven books that I suggest, let me see if I can punch through this here. It's kind of thick. No. If you have um, these seven, like, particular books that I'm, I'm suggesting, it's a great just kind of starting point for having some pages. And if you are just making journals for yourself, those seven books will provide you with so many pages, hundreds and hundreds of pages. So you don't need to go out and buy like all the things and search for, you know, dozens and dozens of, of books to be able to make journals. You really don't need a whole lot. So I will link up the, um, I'm just going to grab this layer right here. And I will link up that PDF that I, I have that you can, uh, download and see what I suggest for for some books that you can look for and I find um, oh that one's already punched you can find 
vintage books on eBay and Etsy, vintage shops, antique shops, um, thrift, thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales. Um, yeah, I would say those are most of the, the places that you can find things like that. And um, yeah, so let me know if you have any questions about anything like that. Let's see. We are getting to the bottom here. So you can just play around with how these are placed. You know, some things more towards the bottom. I already mentioned that, but um, it just creates just a really nice sort of layered layered look. And that's really kind of that classic junk journal look that you see. And you just achieve that by using papers and ephemera of all different sizes and then really just letting color be your guide. Darn, that's too thick. <laughs> Oh, because of the, um, the flash card. And just let color be your guide. And, you know, if you're doing this with kids too, that's for really little kids. They can match up their colors that way. Um, for older kids, they can sort of like use the color wheel and um, learn about complementary colors. That could be a fun little, um, like, man, I can't punch through that, that um, Flash card. Sorry about that. That could be a fun little art lesson, although I guess right now a lot of parents are having to teach their kids using their their school curriculum. I'm very thankful that my kids are older now and my son is in high school, but you know, he's really independent. And I really feel sorry, and my daughter's in college, <laughs> and I really feel for Parents that have to manage their kids' schoolwork right now when they're trying to work at home themselves, it's just crazy. So maybe, hopefully, you guys can find some time to, let's see, how do I want to do that? I told you I can't talk and work at the same time. <laughs> um, well, that's okay. I already started making that one hole here. But hopefully you can find some time while you're staying at home to make yourself a little ring bound journal. And I'm really hoping there's some people that try this out that have never made a journal before. And I really would love to hear if this was helpful at all or if it's not. <laughs> you won't hurt my feelings. Um, Make sure I have that going the right way. Yeah, so that's that's a fun little fold out there. And, um, oh yeah, that's my cover. Um, I think I'm actually gonna turn it that way. Okay, so we are on our last stack here. And then we will, that's actually the last cover, so let me do it like this. And then we'll be able to flip through it and kind of see how it comes together. And like I said, after you're flipping through, you might see some spots where you want to, um, yeah, put that there. Add some more things. This is gonna be a pretty small, journal here but already it's it's really kind of cute um, this is probably about a half inch thick and let's just kind of do a quick little flip and now you can kind of see how each stack and their layers that's all it was it's just layers of different sizes all stacked together to kind of give you this fun little junk journal. So what I want to do is just do a couple little finishing touches. Like I said, this is super, super long. If 
you stuck with us this long, thank you so much. And um, see packets make nice little pockets. You can put some things in there. So just as some like little finishing touches um, to really finish off your journal, you can add fun little things to the edges of your pages. So let me clear off my spot here. Milk caps, you can also get these on Etsy and eBay. Just search for vintage milk caps. Those look really cute, like peeking out on the edge of your pages, um, tickets. I've got some tabs that I punched with a tab punch and, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice, talking too much. <laughs> um, I used a label maker and you guys might've seen on my Instagram, I punched this out with my, my vintage label maker and that makes a cute little thing that you can add to a tab and then add that to one of your page edges. So I will go ahead and I'm going to actually just staple this on here because I like the way these look stapled on. And some other things that are fun to add to your page edges are like fabric or ribbon. I love to use pom-pom um, trim. So anything that you have in that way can look really cute um, in your journal when you line the edges of your pages. So let's see, I don't wanna to take too long to look for just that perfect spot. Um, But I just want to kind of give you an idea of what you can do. Just add that little extra layer of interest at the end. And I love to use staples, but you can also glue or tape things down. Um, also your binder rings, you can decorate them. So let's see. I didn't even think about what I might want to do for my binder rings. Um, I've got some yarn that would be cute. You can just tie a bow with yarn. I've got some fabric remnants here that I could just kind of tie on the edges, but I think I might just do the yarn. I don't make ring bound journals very often, so. <laughs> I think adding that knot is gonna make it too bulky. Let me, I should just tie the bow right to it. The tricky thing with tying yarn bows is getting the edges to be, or the little streamer parts to be even, and I am not going to fuss with that. You can see how uneven that is on that side. Um, I don't wanna fuss with that too much. When I make my charm tassels, I have to retie the yarn for my tassels a whole bunch of times until I get the, the lengths of the yarns exactly right. So I'm not gonna tie that right now. But yeah, just add like these fun little things to the edges of your page, and I just kind of, use the colors in whatever it is I want to add onto the edge of the page to kind of match the colors that are in that kind of page there. Let's see. I want this one to be here so we can not cover up the first tab. Um, got this ruffle I wanted to add. I like adding my trims to the scrapbook pages because those pages are sturdier and they can kind of handle the um, being added to their edges. And this one I am just going to actually use double-sided tape to add this ruffle to the page. And I might 
actually want to add a couple layers of tape a couple pieces wide this is just quarter inch wide tape and if you have a sewing machine you can sew your fabric right to the page edge and that's another nice thing about the ring bound journals is you can take the page out take it over to your sewing machine but in this case we are just going to use double-sided tape to get that down that looks really cute so because this video is getting super super long i am going to stop there but just have fun adding some tabs and fabrics and ribbons to the edges of your pages and like i said i'm losing my voice now because i've been talking so long but i hope that this was helpful for you and i hope this is something that you can do really simply and get a really great feel for how junk journals go together and um, i would love to hear from you and uh, if you make one and you are on Instagram, please tag me. I would love to see it. I would love for you to share your little ring bound junk journal if you make one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.